Hello dear friends and colleagues today we are very happy to introduce to you a novel and innovative way of doing perfect terigem surgery with zero recurrence and zero complications without using any glue stitches plasma or autologous blood using a specially designed large soft scleral bandage contact lens which we have fondly named terigo the name terigium is derived from two latin words terix which means wings and terigion which means fins because double terigia gives us an impression that cornea has developed two wings and single terigium is reminiscent of a dorsal fin and hence the name By the way the sphenoid bones pterygoid processes and pterygoid muscles also take their names almost for the same reasons It is also interesting to note that Maharshi Sushrut the world's first renowned surgeon and plastic surgeon who lived and worked in Kashi which is also known as Varanasi or Banaras a city of India which is the world's most ancient and continuously living city Sushrut was the first physician and surgeon to describe the pterygium and do surgery of not only cataracts but also of pterygium as early as 1000 before Christ that is almost 3000 years before now Today let us also pay our deep respects and tribute to Dr Otto Victor Lee a well-known biochemist from Czech Republic who in 1960 first synthesized soft hydrogel material mixed with silicon in his lab and made the world's first soft contact lens Dr Otto is famously known and respected world over as father of soft contact lenses We are very much thankful to all these and many more anonymous colleagues who have participated in clinical trial of using Terigo and given their feedback and results Collectively we have done over 300 Terigo surgeries at 15 centers by 15 surgeons over last 18 months with zero recurrence of pterygium and zero complications. Terigo is a 21 mm dial large soft lens made from high water hydrogel material. Please notice the difference between corneal bandage lens and the Terigo the scleral bandage lens. Now first Let us see the terigo surgery step by step. First with the Castro Vigo or Westcott scissors we cut the conjunctiva over the neck and body of the terigium and the canthal conjunctiva is slightly separated mostly by blunt dissection now the closed blades of scissors are passed under the body of pterygium to bluntly separate the band from the sclera and the band is then cut and reflected on the cornea now by firmly holding the body band with two strong colibri or limbs forceps the neck and head of the pterygium is avulsed and rexed from its insertion on the cornea this is the safest way to keep the bowman membrane as best intact as possible then the remaining tissue tags from the cornea as well as from sclera are removed by pulling away or by scraping dissection which is done by crescent blade or by 15 number blade now very gentle and mild low power wet field bipolar cautery is applied always under a film of water and excess water is then dried by cotton tipped or aero sponge swab now the proposed limbus based conjunctival autograft flap is sized and marked by castrovizo caliper 
and a sterile gentian violet medical marker pen. Our personal preference is to take the flap always from lower fornix as far as possible to keep the upper fornix virgin for a possible future need for anti-glaucoma surgery. Now we gently put two conjunctival scratch incisions with crescent blade with very little force always avoiding any damage to the underlying sclera and then the flap is dissected with waistcoat scissors. Care is always taken only to take the conjunctival flap avoiding the tenon capsule as much as possible because we always want to avoid a bare sclera at the donor site. And then we reflect the flap and with the, with the point of scissors as well as with the crescent blade we dissect out the tentacular attachments till the limbus. Now the flap is cut out with sharp pointed waistcoat scissors harvesting the limbal stem cell band which is best known as the palisades of walked and the flap is then spread over cornea and gently washed with BSS. Using a Colibri and Macpherson suture tying forceps, the flap is inverted so that the epithelial surface is now facing skywards or upwards or the frontwards and the flap is brought and set into its seat or pit always keeping the donor site limbus oriented to the recipient site limbus and with Macpherson forceps a sort of multi-point acupressure therapy is given to the flap to make it to stick to scleral bed. After patiently waiting for more than a full minute for the surface to dry up and the natural thrombin and fibrin to form good adhesion, we now spray the cornea with BSS preferably with 1GEM4 diluted moxifloxacin to check for the reasonably good adhesion of the flap. This water jet test confirms that the flap is well stuck. If we had not waited enough, the flap may not have stuck well. It will fold or move in the water jet test like this. In such case, reposit and repeat the acupressure and wait for little more time to dry and restick the flap. The flap is in situ like in a shallow pit, so it will usually stay there fairly well. Now with a wet cotton tip swab, we take out the Terrigo BCL from its bottle which is then inwardly spread over the cornea and graft flap. It is like spreading a king size big bed sheet, so we will need at least three or four hands to spread it. So the scrubbed assistant has to help the surgeon in this step. At this stage, if some air gets trapped under the lens, please don't worry. Air bubbles will get burped out from 12 o'clock position when the patient sits up. Now, we put moxifloxacin drops over the BCL. And please notice that the graft margins, if has moved, can be nudged even through the BCL. BCL becomes more visible in the UV light because it absorbs and reflects UV rays and then the speculum is gently removed always under the direct and microscopic vision of the surgeon so that we make sure that during speculum removal either the lens or the graft hasn't moved from in situ position. We prefer also to remove the drapes also under the microscopic vision of the surgeon just making sure that the graft and the BCL both are undisturbed and are in situ and we prefer to close eyelids and tape them together for at least six to eight hours.
If the patient is from outstation place, we also put an iPad to absorb mild oozing of serum or blood. Patients are asked to remove the pad themselves the next day morning, clean eyes with wipes and gently open the lids. This is the second day, 24 hours post-operative and as we can see, the graft has already well healed and the lens is also in situ. Fine. This is one week post-op and on slit lamp under proparacaine topical anesthesia we gently remove the BCL with Macpherson forceps and as we can see the graft is already well taken up and has healed so well. The Terigo BCL covers all the three sites donor area, graft, as well as corneal epithelial defect. So there is almost no pain or foreign body sensation and all three sites heal much faster under the shielded protection of the pterygo and the surgery also becomes faster, usually taking only 5 to 10 minutes. We fondly call this as cut, paste and cover or cut, paste and shield surgery for pterygium. Even for OSSN, we use the same method and same pterygo lens. If OSSN is too big and too wide, we use limbal autograft from the other eye of the patient. In the pre-op and post-op regime, nothing extra or extraordinary to be done. Pterygo surgery can be done under topical anesthesia or under peribulbar or subtenin block with lignocaine 2% with adrenaline and hyaluronidase. Piloca 2% eye drops are to be put 30 minutes prior to block if it is to be done under block to keep the pupil constricted so as to avoid excessive light going on to the retina during the surgery. Tablet diclopera plus pentoperazole we usually give and tablet cifadroxyl 500 mg also we usually give before surgery. Don't forget to stop all anticoagulants and blood thinners if any going on 4 days prior to surgery. Our post-op regime is 6 to 24 hours iPad, MoxiKT plus lubricant eye drops 3 times a day for 4 weeks, FML eye drops TID to be added from day 5, oral NSAIDs as needed and oral multivitamins with zinc for 30 days. We strongly advise all our patients to use UV protection glasses or sunglasses whenever in out in open harsh environment to prevent recurrence by UVB exposure. Let us see the specifications of Terrigo lens. It is 21 mm in diameter. It is made of high water content hydrogel having 75% water content with highest possible oxygen transfer capacity. It is having peripheral soft skirt with slightly firm and more thick central optical zone which provides a slight vaulting keeping a potential tear film of approx 50 microns between lens and the cornea and it can be kept in eye for 24 by 7 for 4 months at a stretch. Its material has very high affinity for moxifloxacin so it is a drug delivery lens which it absorbs very fast and retains long and well and slowly releases moxie over many hours so putting moxie eye drops twice a day is enough Thus, understand it as not only a bended lens, but as a sort of a medicated bended lens. This is how the lens is made available in a wide mouth glass bottle, which is sterilized by autoclaving at manufacturing. So the inner contents are already sterile. It is made by Silver Line Laboratories, New Delhi, India. Although the inner contents of the glass bottle containing this BCL is sterile, we autoclave the whole bottle after packing it in few layers of linen in the autoclave drum so that the outer surface is also now sterile so the whole bottle can be handled by the surgeon or the scrubbed assistant. Please don't worry, the material of this lens can be autoclaved many many times. In near future, the Terrigo lens will be available in this type of pre-sterile pouches, but at present it is best to autoclave the whole bottle. By the way, many of us have a doubt how the autoclave steam will reach the inner surface of the glass bottle. Will the inner contents become autoclaved and sterile? 
whenever a sealed glass bottle is heated inside the autoclave the water inside the bottle also boils and forms inner steam thus this becomes a mini glass autoclave chamber inside the big stainless steel autoclave chamber so just to understand the inner contents are sterilized by inner steam and the outer surface is sterilized by outer steam the outside steam and inside steam of the glass bottle is always constantly and continuously in equilibrium of temperature and pressure and that is the very reason why the bottle does not explode or implode all the prefilled visco and other injections and hydrophilic iols are also sterilized in the same way so please don't keep doubts or worries about autoclave glass or polypropylene bottles there are multiple other advantages of terigo lens cost difficulties of availability and troubles of reconstitution and preservation and complications of fibrin tissue glue are also totally out cost and complications of sutures are totally out graft edema chemosis and congestion due to fibrin glue allergy never the alarming redness under the graft due to use of autologous blood as adhesive which keeps on haunting the patients for 3 weeks is also out of question pressure and ironing effect of the bcl skirt does not allow any shrinkage of the graft so never there are any bare sclera areas such small bare sclera areas or the stitches are the cause of granulomas which will never happen with the terigo bcl graft loss did not occur in any case and will not occur for sure because it cannot occur graft cannot move or escape anywhere from under the terigo bcl lens is large almost touching from upper fornix to lower fornix so it cannot pop out or fall out like normal 14 mm lenses so lens loss or graft loss will never happen so the terigo always gives perfect healing 100% in our series not a single patient had post op delen formation in fact terigo is the and the best treatment for corneal delens thanks to the very high water content of this hydrogel lens as well as the thin tear film which it maintains in front of the epithelium and hence continuous wetting of the epithelium delens of surgery is done by someone else elsewhere even after conjunctival autograft type surgery can also be healed very fast just by putting terigo lens without any other intervention by the way delen is the dutch word for pits or craters we never had any case of persistent epithelial defect in any of our cases in fact epithelial healing is much faster in the shielded environment of terigo 3.2 days with bcl versus 5.7 days without bcl this is an interesting publication on this subject and not a single case had any type or any amount of scleral melting near or far from the limbus in fact this bcl is the best treatment for delens and scleral and corneal melts in few cases of terigem surgery performed elsewhere with bare sclera method where there was significant and dangerous scleral desiccation or melting we just took a large limbal autograft from same or contralateral eye and pasted it over the ischemic crater and covered with terigo bcl oral multivitamins with zinc supplements were given tablet doxycycline 100 mg twice a day on empty stomach for 7 to 10 days were given fml or lotepred eye drops qid to be installed for 2 to 3 weeks and the defect healed very fast and very securely doxycycline in presence of a b c and d vitamins and zinc inhibits matrix metalloproteinase 2 and 9 enzyme in all types of collagen tissues hyperactivity of mmp2 and mmp9 is the root cause of collagenolysis it also inhibits other inflammatory cytokines such as il1 and il6 thus oral doxycycline with topical soft steroid is an important inflammatory modulator for ocular surface repair this paper and all its references are an interesting read for this subject 
Interestingly, we treated one case of scleral delen after squint surgery which was done elsewhere just by covering it with free conjunctival graft and our BCL over it and of course with doxyrezyme, it safely healed so well in 10 days. Just for info, we have never used mitomycin C or any other antimetabolites in any form for any of our pterygium surgeries. In this way, such a deep and dangerous scleral defect can also heal so well with pterygo and doxy. With the same regimen, corneal melts and desmetocils can also be treated and they also heal very well. AGS blood melting, leakage and hypotony can also be treated with the same method. Conjunctival melting stops under 24 hours and healing starts in one or two days and this is three week post treatment. These are the references for further reading on this subject. This is an interesting study from LVPEI Hyderabad. Now before we conclude, in short let us understand the pathophysiology of pterygium. Essentially a pterygium or a pseudoterygium is the conjunctivalization of a part of cornea where limbal stem cells are unable to provide new healthy epithelium on, on daily or hourly basis because the stem cells are dead or nearly dead or non-functional due to molecular death of them caused by UV radiation, pollution or lacrimal river and maybe other causes. Limbal stem cells are present 360 degree in their niche which is under the palisades of walked and the epithelial cell proliferation and supply is continuous and centripetal like in this animation. So when the limbal stem cells die, mostly in nasal pole and sometimes on temporal pole, epithelium repair is defective and this leads to activation of corneal chemotactic signal, almost a cry or a petition to conjunctiva that please come to my help, rescue me by covering me. This is the cry which the cornea sends to the conjunctiva and conjunctiva responds in the form of forming a pterygium. So, if we do not restore the limbal stem cells in their niche, namely the palisades of walked, the chances are very high that the pterygium will regrow very soon. Autologous graft of conjunctiva, if it is not containing reasonable good number of limbal stem cells, will not be able to prevent the recurrence in large majority of cases and limbus to limbus orientation of the graft placement is also very very important. Otherwise the pterygium will come back in few months and it could be aggressive like an injured or irritated lion or tiger. So it is very essential to restore the barrier function of the palisades of walked. By the way, palisade is the Latin word of barricade or fence. Many young eye surgeons have a doubt in their minds. If we take limbal stem cells in the autograft, what will happen to the donor site? Will it develop a pterygium at 12 or 6 o'clock position? The answer is a no. Please don't worry about this because palisades of walked and the niche of limbal stem cells near the superior and inferior poles of the cornea are much wider and deeper than what is visible to us on slit lamp. Even if there is not much melanin pigmentation, the niche is still there and as active and as live as a beehive. And it also extends to a fairly good extent into the extreme periphery of cornea. Also, the niche of limbal stem cells is a digitating structure, multiple fingers like, something like microvilli of the intestinal mucosa. And hence, number of active and potent stem cells are immense in number. And the niche is not just a two-dimensional structure, it is a three-dimensional structure, the real nest, almost 1200 microns wide and 450 microns deep, 360 degrees and highly corrugated and highly digitated. So 
when we have taken a limbal autograft we still have taken only about half of their population and left half of the niche intact in c2 moreover these stem cells donor as well as recipient house have fully alive vivian cells because there was no apoptosis here at the donor site due to factors such as uv or wind and pollution of the lacrimal lake and hence they are not only unipotent but very very potent they will undergo much faster mitotic cell division and replenish and repopulate themselves fully on both the sides that is why we can easily do double pterygium surgery in same sitting without any worries of developing a pseudo pterygium or a big penis at the donor site no this does not happen so please keep in mind just taking a free conjunctival autograft is not enough it has to have limbal stem cells and the limbal stem cell niche has to be oriented towards the limbus and also please make sure of anteroposterior orientation of the graft and the marker pen here is a great help before we conclude we must pay our heartfelt gratitude and deep respects to dr tung tian sun and dr harminder singh dua for their discovery of limbal stem cells and the role of these special cells in preventing the conjunctivalization of cornea for the other indications of terigo and various other types of scleral lenses please see our next video please also see our next video about the real cause and pathophysiology of terigium and its recurrence so as to learn the best method for prevention of its recurrence this video will be very useful to yes the young eye surgeons and the residents terigo is a great value for money device we all should open our minds and hearts more for the variety of scleral lenses and also for other specialty lenses because as is said by love and bailey eyes cannot see what mind doesn't know we have no financial interest in terigo lens mr gagan sahni a great knowledgeable person and an excellent educator is the owner of silver line laboratories which is the company making these specialty lenses he is very kind and always eager to inform and educate us on these technologies he can even hold a full day cme on these lenses please contact mr vikram bhai panchal for commercial availability of terigo he can supply you all over india and he can also offer you the best price packages please like and share this video and please subscribe for future new videos thank you very much for your kind attention and patient listening